Well, a very good morning from the commentary box. Delighted to have your company. We are live from Allianz Park, the home of Saracens. And it is, of course, the under-15s NatWest Schools Cup. And we are in the NatWest Schools Vars competition in the under-15s level. And our first semi-final this morning, Bridgewater High School against Dr. Challoner's Grammar School. My name's Nick Heath. Delighted to have your company this morning. And uh, I'm also very pleased to say that alongside me well no less than a rugby world cup winner she's hoping to be an olympian this year as well it's a very good morning to natasha hunt how are you natasha very well thank you thanks for having me nick great looking to have you here to looking forward to your insights of course so yes the two schools that we've got here bridgewater against dr challoners these two schools have done superbly well to get to this stage of the competition both have gone further than ever before and now have the chance of reaching a first twickenham final might not be the most recognizable names in schools rugby but these two have put in some outstanding performances to get here. Bridgewater have beaten the likes of Auden Shaw and St Edwards College. In fact, we can have a look at uh, the results of the teams and how they have got here so far. Just looking at Bridgewater then. Of course, that was uh, the result in the cup, that first game. So into the Vars, a big win against Liverpool College. And then the bye through into round four. Crystalton High School and then the win over St Edwards as I was mentioning big result over Auden Shaw the Redillian Academy and then into the quarterfinals that 20 points to three win over Devonport High School for boys that's got them to this position today and they of course as with everybody else are bidding for a place in the final at Twickenham it's a great competition for schoolboys of this age a chance to get themselves playing at some of the biggest stadiums in the country. Allianz Park for the semi-finals, and if they can go all the way, a chance to get through to Twickenham. Let's just have a look at the Challenger's results and how they've got here as well. A few nils on a few of their opponents as well. It was a closer game in their cup game, but then straight into the Vars. Palmer's school, 57-7, a 31 points to five win over the Windsor Boys School. Then they nilled Reading School, nilled Desborough College, Dauncey School, and that big result against Clifton College. That was really a big statement, and there was lots of anxious parents on their way to the Manchester Grammar School as uh, they took on them away and they won 28 points to 10 in that quarter final i know how tense they were on the bus because well my sister happens to be a mother of one of the pupils i'm commentating on my nephew this morning which will be uh, interesting natasha it's going to be your job to make sure that there's not too much bias in favor of dr <laughs> challenge i'll try and make sure i keep you in check nick yeah excellent stuff so the uh, the sun is shining in north london it is bitterly cold as i know it is up and down the country but uh, the mottled clouds are flowing overhead and we are live it is the live stream of the natwest schools cup under 15s natwest vars semi-final bridgewater high school against dr challoners and there is the vars awaiting the entrance of the team so let's just have a look at the individuals who will be taking the field very very shortly and here's the bridgewater squad uh, bridgewater first 15 coach martin turner and uh, front row there, Ben Glee, Josh Hadland and Joel Hughes in. The engine room, Angus Stewart and Austin Carr. Nathan Burke, Curtis Connop and Cole Oakley running things in the back row. Natasha Hunt's position of scrum half, Jacob Roscoe, Jake Hibbert, Jack Rigby. Centre partners, Oliver Livett and Philip Rattigan, who is the skipper of the side. And Jack Shaw, and at the back, it's Oliver Brown. And the lineup for Dr. Challoner's school. In the front row, Sid Day, Jake Wilkins, and Ben Quick. A couple of those boys will be wearing the scrum caps. Dom Goodman and Joe Long in the second row. Ed Griffiths, he's the skipper. I think there was uh, a little bit of concern over the uh, injury of James Tunney, but he is playing. Daniel Peters is on the open side. Then Devon Owen, Monty Weatherall, the halfbacks. Blake Morris and Richard Dean. Zach Collingbourne and Ollie Anderson, the three quarters, with Huey Chadwick, who is part of the Wasps Academy. He's got decent hands, and coach Chris Duggan will be certainly hoping that Dr. Challoners can show the form that has got them here to try and get their way past Bridgewater. But 
was chatting to uh, Natasha Hunt just before we came on air, just about how difficult it is to predict so many of these results, given that it's a new school year group each time. It's a new opportunity for another batch of players to have their legacy within their own school year. And, uh, and certainly this, th this morning, it's just going to be fascinating to see which of these teams comes out on top. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's about, you can work up to the one year and then obviously the next year that's coming through, they can back to back sometimes and you can try and carry on that form. But a lot of the time it is dependent on what kind of school balls you get at that level. Just looking at the replacements then. Bridgewater with a slightly smaller squad, it has to be said. Andrew Kellett, Jack Smith and Joe Higgins. And then Dr. Challoners. Well, they've got a fair few more in that side. Valji, Benjo Race, Harry Spenowin, and Matt Bellamy. Expect him to come on for the second 40. Likely to be the case with uh, Devon Owen. And that's how the lineups are looking. Getting ever closer to kick off. So, Natasha, you were here for the uh, under 18s games last weekend. Now we're to the under 15s level. What difference will we be expecting, perhaps, in terms of skill level from these two age groups? It'll be really interesting to see. Um, I'm a previous school teacher and worked up at um, King Edward School for Boys, so I've done a lot of coaching, and I think the tactical side of it will be the thing that we see the big difference with. So the under 18s, tactically, they were really astute. They were using the kick really, really well to get in behind their opposition and try and gain the territory. So it'll be really interesting to see if the under 15s boys take that approach as well. And in your former position, or not former position, current position, my apologies <laughs> of, uh, of Scrum Marv, I haven't retired you too early, I didn't mean to do that. Um, is this the age where you really start to learn how to talk back to the referee and try and referee the match? <laughs> I think you kind of have that or you don't, you know, like, it, it depends on whether you know the rules inside out like I do or whether um, you're still trying to learn them as you go. So it'll be interesting to see and I'm really looking forward to seeing how the nines take the field and see the battle that happens in that position. Yes, absolutely. There have been some decent nines that have played on this Allianz Park pitch, of course. Richard Wigglesworth, often the lead man for Saracens. And uh, don't forget, you can keep in touch with us here on the live stream as well. We will be checking the social media feed. Hashtag NatWest Schools Cup. We are at Schools Cup on Twitter. That's the handle, but we want to hear from you. Hashtag NatWest Schools Cup, wherever you're watching. If you are parents, grandparents, friends and family from around the world who are tuning in to catch your son, your nephew, your cousin in action, well, we would love to hear from you. Great opportunity for all of these teams. We saw them arrive earlier. They've had their big team shots taken out on the field. They then had headshots individually as well. Perhaps the very start of a profile that could go on to greater and bigger things if they go through the age grade school-wise and then on into the national setup. Got some county players, certainly in that Dr. Challoner's side, playing for Bucks County. Dr. Challoner's based in Buckinghamshire, out in Amersham. And now the moment that the intro music starts, the atmosphere begins to build. And Can you remember the earliest moments where, where these sort of atmospheres were coming to you, Natasha? I didn't really start playing properly until I was about 17, so I didn't necessarily feel that atmosphere build until I got into the senior level. Um, but definitely, I think as soon as you started playing for your country and representing that, then the atmospheres that come with that are just so different. And this is a great occasion for the boys. Under 15 level, being at Allianz Park, with the background music going, it's fantastic and something that I really hope the boys rise to. Yes, absolutely. Well, the coaches emerge from the dressing rooms just down below us out of your picture. They go and take their seats. It's a North versus South derby, really. Bridgewater High School based in Warrington, in Lancashire. Chance for the bragging rights north to south, as we can see both of the teams lining up there. Bridgewater in the blue on the left of your picture, and Dr. Challoners on the right in the red. Just getting their final instructions. And of course, the parents and fans are in the stands opposite us, and they'll be well, desperately excited, desperately hoping that their families, their sons and nephews, grandsons can do the job here this morning. Here come the two teams.
So the two teams out onto the field, then they get into their huddles. We're starting to get the messages in on hashtag Natworth Schools Cup. Come on, Bridgewater, watching live, supporting Curtis Connock. That's from Louis Johnson Air. Good to have your company, Louis. Messages for some of the teams playing later on. Of course, we've got a second Vars semi-final to come, and then the Cup semis a little later on. Games at 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 5 o'clock. It's going to be a full day of action here at Allianz Park. My name's Nick Heath. Alongside me, Natasha Hunt. And it is Bridgewater High School against Dr. Challoner's Grammar School, and we're live from Allianz Park. So waiting to get underway. Oliver Brown plays for Cheshire under-15s county. And the ball is knocked back and into the big hands of Joel Hughes. And Dr. Challoner's just carry him into touch there. First opportunity for Jake Wilkins from the line-out. Ball is in. Just trying to get that ball away at the back. Daniel Peters lays it back, but it's a little untidy. Bridgewater hoping to use the momentum from the turnover ball and comes out to the fly half. Jake Hibbert. Real contest for that ball. It's coming back on the challenger's side. So. Early difficulties for either side to hold on to the ball in those breakdown situations. And now they look to try and find some room on that right-hand touch line. But Ollie Anderson was taken into touch. Yeah, it's a real breakdown battle at the moment. Both teams are really physical in that department. And we've seen three or four turnovers initially. Protection of the ball is so key. commentating on Gloucester against Wasps in the Premiership yesterday and well, Gloucester's strategy against Wasps was just to deny them ball and keep territory, keep pinning their opposition back. Peters with the carry around the corner. Bridgewater were really rucking through heavily there, but the penalty comes to Challoners. Coming in at the side is the decision from the referee. It was a little untidy in there. They may need a, a strong eye from the referee just to make sure that that breakdown is a little bit more clear. <laughs> Challoners will have the line out. First foray really into the Bridgewater half. No lifting at this level, of course. Peters tidies up at the back of the line out, but it was just knocked forward before it got to him. Yeah, there's a real emphasis on not getting pushed into touch, isn't there? That line out ball is such a lottery because there is no lifting that it can just end up on any side. So that is a real difficult one that you can't rely on in this game. It really is the sort of level where height is such an advantage, isn't it? really is. A natural gift is what's going to be helpful. Come on, Challoners, from Mark Roberts. They have the ball here. Coming through the centres. Decent bit of play here from Challoners on first phase ball. Blake Morris is going for that corner. It's a really strong run. Gets the ball back in field. At the... Uh, Assistance flag on the far side is up, but that was a really strong attack from Challoners, and it came flying down that back line. Great hands, good depth on it, and a really incisive attack. Yeah, great bit of play here. You see the crisp handling, balls out in front, taking it to the line, and the timing on that pass was absolutely brilliant from Richard Dean. And then you can see when Blake gets the ball, why he scored eight tries this season. So, another opportunity for Challoners. Really good work from Dean again, delaying that pass and inviting Chadwick onto it. Can they get Anderson in at the corner? I think they can. What's the decision? 
They're celebrating. Referee's checking with his assistant. Try given. Challoners first on the scoreboard, and look what it means to them. Brilliant to see how excited, ecstatic those boys are to get the first score. Absolutely fantastic. Again, we see the crisp handling from the backs. Brilliant bit of play. That one just checks the fullback, Huey Chadwick, a bit, but he manages to get the ball away, and that's a great finish from Ollie Anderson. Well, dream start for Challoners. They're under the caution, they're in 22 for that opening minute, but as soon as they got the chance to get going, off they went. Ominous moments for Bridgewater, given the strength of that attack. But now, first opportunity, it's a tricky old effort for Monty Weatherall. Oh, he's hit that absolutely sweetly. It's a superb effort from Weatherall. That's that just, will give him enormous confidence. And that's just taken him over 100 points this season. Absolutely fantastic kick from that young man there. Monty Weatherall, brilliant stuff. So Bridgewater got to try and get themselves back into this. Trailing as they do. Bridgewater nil, Dr Challoner seven. Restart from Oliver Brown. High hanging kick, it's not gone 10 metres. So Challoners will have the option back. So many teams talk about compounding the errors, not wanting to do too many negative things one after the other. And well, for Bridgewater, that restart was crucial. They needed to try and get a hand on it. Unfortunately, it's not gone the 10. So once again, it's advantage Challoners. We've seen how dangerous as well these Challoner boys are from set-piece play, so they'll be loving the, this opportunity. There's a fantastic blind side that potentially the 8, 9, 14 are going to be able to take. Yes, real options here for Challoners. Always come back on the Bridgewater side, though now Challoners have got some defending to do. They've kicked the ball away downfield. It's gathered and into the hands of Weatherall to make the clearance, but he hasn't found touch. Brown receives it running forward he's got Rigby in support on his left but he's swallowed up well into the tackle places the ball back it's not the tidiest but it does come away through the number eight Cole Oakley and then Roscoe scrum half takes it in they're gonna need a scrum half Ben Gleave carries it on Roscoe once more, oh, plenty of pressure coming through from Challoners on the collision. Jake Hibbert. Well, then there's a turnover. Challoners look to have won that back if they could get it back. Oh, well, there's a penalty coming. Might have been a bit unfortunate for Challoners. They'd won that ball back, but then I think as they tried to secure the rock ball on the ground to get decent service, that's when they actually strayed into an offside position. So, call here from Bridgewater is to go for the three points. Try and get the team on the board and narrow the deficit. More of you communicating with us through hashtag NatWest Schools Cup. Joe, come on, Bridgewater. Shout out to Sheriff. So, Oliver Brown to have an attempt just inside that 10 meter line. Strikes it right footed. It's not going to get there. And it's fielded by Collingbourne. Clearance is made. That's a really good clearance as well. That will relieve the pressure on Challoners. And well, they're doing everything right so far, Natasha. Oh, they really are. It's a great bit of hands off the floor just to get that ball away with the oncoming Bridgewater defence. And then the composure of that young man to send the ball that far off his line. Brilliant. Bridgewater with possession inside their own half. Has come back on the Challoners' side. 
Shot is a little bit more of a lottery. It's less secure ball from the line out at this level. Break round the corners from the hooker Wilkins. Taking it into contact, supported by Peters. Can they get that ball back? They're trying to. Is that Bridgewater player doing enough to get away? Owen. Passes the ball on to one of his forwards. Get him to truck the ball up. Owen once more. Gets that pass away. Crossfield kick from Weatherall. It's well fielded. Jack Rigby. Got past the first defender. And it's been lost forward by Challoner. So it's advantage as Oliver Brown takes it. But he's just being driven back. Referee still happy to play the advantage. Ball. Oh, it's been kicked straight up and back. So no advantage. And they'll come back for that knock on. Just got a uh, moment to check the comms on our referee so that we can hear him. We mentioned previously about the tactics that these boys are going to employ in comparison to the under 18s, and they were definitely on at the moment. The, the Challenger boys, they've realised that at the line out it is a lottery, but actually they're getting most of the gains from that. So they're just really happy to put the ball into touch, to kick the ball down, and to put Bridgewater under that pressure, which is brilliant recognition and brilliant play from them. Insights from Women's Rugby World Cup winner Natasha Hunt. Challenge just knocking on, so Bridgewater will have this scrum. Jacob Roscoe. This is a signal from the referee and gets that ball in. It's away. Clearance kick is made. Taken and controlled with the boot by Huey Chadwick, who just slipped into that tackle, but he has managed to get the ball back. Bridgewater are doing their best to spoil it, and it has come back on the Bridgewater side. Slightly untidy, but they're trying to get it down that three-quarter line, and they might have got Challenders a little narrow here. But it doesn't matter, because they're going direct, straight up the middle. Really strong stuff from the skipper, Rattigan. Now they pop to the right. Josh Hadland, the hooker. Challenge challenge it back. That's really good work from Wilkins. Little chip over the top from Owen. Possibly didn't want to give possession away at that point. Challenge might have been served better to keep that ball in hand. Bridgewater. It's away from Roscoe. Now then, where's Hibbert off to? And then just to get the offload away. Challenge is doing their best to try and rip it, but Bridgewater still have it. Coming forward through Nathan Burke. Peters in there. Trying to spoil. It's untidy. But Bridgewater still have it. Just up over the halfway line. Goes back from Hadland. Penalty Bridge Bridgewater. Not rolling away. It was a fairly clear offence for the rest to see ref to see that one. Opportunity to go for the post from here. It's a tap and go. That's what we like to see. Oh, and then a huge hit. Channel is defending with all their might. Bridgewater still have it though, and fair play to them for it. Another pick and go around the fringes there. Getting a certain amount of joy with that. Nathan Burke has carried well in the last few phases. Blindside flanker is enjoying that, and then a chance to go through the gap for Oliver Livett. But then the turnover. This could be critical. Challoners, can they commit the defenders? Coming away down this right-hand side, cutting back in is Collingbourne. He's been looking bright at outside centre so far. Carried forward by Joe Long. Oh, it's been ripped. Now then, did that come forward off a of Challoner's hand? It did. sensing so far is that uh, Bridgewater back their forwards effort and Challoners like to send it wide. I was going to say exactly the same thing. Yeah, the leg drive from the Bridgewater forwards is absolutely phenomenal at the moment. You've mentioned him, but Nathan Burke in the last few uh, phases has been absolutely outstanding. Firstly with the turnover and then with his carries. And um, the backs of Challoners, their timing of the pass is absolutely sensational. And that's what's the, the key difference for them at the moment. 
Yes, it certainly is. Using the opportunities to put their players into space. Now that we do have a change for Challoners, Callum Hodson has uh, come onto the field. I think he's uh, possibly on for Oli Anson. Or is it Chadwick, possibly? I think uh, we're just noticing. In the meantime, Bridgewater have the ball. Attempted turnover. From Challenge is not quite successful, so Hibbert's going to have to tidy up. Penalty, Bridgewater. It's a shame for Chadwick to be missing out, the Wasps Academy man. He's a talented fullback. Number Oliver Brown from the middle of the field to take a bit of territory up that right hand touchline. because I think we've uh, got a question over an HIA. It's that Collingbourne who's uh, just getting a bit of attention. Yeah, all of the Challoners team will be hoping that uh, Zach Collingbourne will be absolutely fine after this assessment because he's been brilliant for them. He's almost playing like another flanker in the breakdown. He's really sharp around the fringes and looking to turn over ball as well as being absolutely brilliant in attack. Challoners with the lead. Still from that try through Oli Anderson. Challoners sending the ball down the three-quarter line one way, then down the other and in at the corner. Do keep in touch with us. Hashtag NatWest Schools Cup. Mark Roberts, this game's making me so jealous. Player who's not managed to make it through, who would love to be here. I like this uh, optimism from Joe Bridgewater for the 50 points to seven win. <laughs> Expecting the comeback. That's well, there's plenty left in this game. That's a big score like that is, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like backing your team. Absolutely. It's the problem with these. some of these messages coming in. I don't know. I don't know whether they're in jokes, whether I'm saying things that is <laughs> acceptable or not. Let's see if we can stitch Nick up. Hashtag NatWest Schools Cup. <laughs> <laughs> I shall have my, uh, my sensor's eye on what's coming through. Quarter of an hour played in this, our first game of the day, a second Vars semi-final to come. And well, good news for Challoners is that Huey Chadwick has returned and Zach Collingbourne has not been forced to leave the field either, so they're at their full complement of their first 15 Challoners. Running onto the ball and taking it at pace is the skipper, Ed Griffiths. I mentioned his name too much in the first half of the first half, but that's a lovely little offload, sending Sid Day into contact from Weatherall. Owen goes short side. Big physical carry from Blake Morris. Owen again. Weatherall coming through the centres. Needed good hands from Collingbourne and got them. Oh, it's a little loose. Chadwick might find himself a little bit isolated there as Bridgewater come through. But Owen has got the ball. It's there for Daniel Peters. Steps in off the right boot. Takes a metre or two. Away from Owen. Weatherall hoists it high. Decent amount of hang time on that one. It's really well taken by Jack Shaw, though. Thought he might have called the mark, but he didn't. And the pressure is really coming on, but penalty to Bridgewater. And again, Challoners getting caught coming in at the side, and they're going to have to be cleaner in that area. Yeah, definitely. The referee's highlighted that as an area of weakness, hasn't he? He's picked them three or four times already, so that needs to be brought up at half-time. Yes, Bridgewater not hanging around, though, with the quick tap. Good strength in there from Sid Day for Challoners. And the boys in red have turned that ball over. It's there for Devon Owen. Weatherall, Collingbourne, trying to pick the line through. Anderson, another of the Bucks County players. 
Owen again. Weatherall. Joining the line is Tunney. He's a decent carrier, Tunney, but on that moment, he's just overcooked the pass and it's drifted into touch. Yeah, you can see he's disappointed with that one, but actually the line coming in from Blake Morris wasn't the best. He was drifting off the ball. Um, it was a great pass into the space and one that um, Ollie Anderson scored off before, so he'll be disappointed with this. But if you see the line from, from the winger is going away from the ball, when all he needs to do is run straight with his hands up. Stay wider, perhaps. The ball comes down. Spotting the chance to make a few little yards around the corner was Devon Owen. Scrum half went normally want to find himself at the centre of a rolling ball, but he was there and it made decent yards. Wilkins with another carry. Owen manages to catch a couple of the Bridgewater players offside. Tunney always a big carrier, and he's shown it there, places the ball back well. Weatherall comes through Richard Dean, Colin Moore, Challoner's looking dangerous again here, and Huey Chadwick touches down for the second try. And it's the swiftness of that ball down the back line once again. The initial carry from Tunney was crucial to giving them the forward momentum. And Challoners now lead by 12 points to nil with a conversion to come. Yeah, we've just mentioned him, but I think the backs have Tunney to thank for this. His carry sucks in loads of the Bridgewater defenders and he keeps going with the leg drive. But the best thing about that was the ball placement. So you see here, He's just and, placed it as oh, it comes in. Oh, he's just in, placed yeah. it, yeah. And then there's crisp hands again. The pass coming in from Collingbourne just checks Chadwick slightly, but brilliant finish. Great handling. They've clearly done loads of work on their handling in the build-up to this game, and it's showing. And it's the pace they're taking that ball as well, isn't it? We see even at the top level, players get the ball down the line, but they're not running onto it. Yeah, the pace, but also the timing of the pass. So they're making sure that the defenders are committed onto them so they can't drift off and make that next tackle before they release that ball. So, Weatherall, he's already slotted one from almost an identical position. Might have done it again. He certainly has. Great calibre of kicker. And Weatherall gets his own personal tally up to four. Challoners now leading by 14 points to nil. More messages coming through, hashtag Natworth Schools Cup. Keep going, Phil Rattigan from Kieran Bell. Come on, Austin, let's go, Bridgie from Henry Palmer. Also just uh, seeing pictures coming through of Millfield Rugby. They will be playing later on. All of the teams here bidding for a place at Twickenham. Great clearance kick downfield from Challoners. Yeah, that's a great clearance. I looked up initially and thought that that should have gone through the hands because the defensive line were really tight. But when you're making ground like that and you're potentially going to win that ball back, then why not? Well, that's the thing with the set piece, with the line out at this, at this level. We've mentioned it a couple of times, but certainly there is the opportunity to steal line out a lot more easily. And if your operators are tall and strong, as Challoners have shown, here we go again. Does come down on the Bridgewater side that time. Peters has got to make sure he's on side. There's a penalty advantage, I think, coming to Bridgewater. Certainly the referee's arm was out. Oh, there's an attempt there. What's the referee's view of that? It's a penalty. This is an absolute bugbear of mine. I've got to, I'm going to have to admit it to you here, Natasha. It seems to me that you can, you either have to catch the ball, or if you don't catch the ball trying to intercept it, it's a penalty, in some, in some instances, a yellow card. Yeah, it, that's now, just the way that the rule's going, isn't it? That's clearly an attempt to catch it. Yeah, he's it's, hoping to nudge it in through the air into his hand. <laughs> when the rest is as deliberate, though, you've just got to bite the bullet and get on with it, don't you, unfortunately? I'm not expecting uh, the officials to be listening to my point of view, that's for sure. <laughs> Ball is cleared downfield, Bridgewater come back with it. It's a really good, solid first contact from the hooker, Hadland. 
and this is what they love to do. Pick and go around the corner, bend leave on that occasion. Now they're going to potentially get it out via the back line. Cutting back in is Oliver Livett. Again, it's Gleave. Ball safety the key for Bridgewater. A little dummy and foray through the gap. Now out down the left-hand side. Hibbert trying to make work his way through. Peters with the last tackle on him. Livet is going wider. He's not the biggest man out on the field. Ball went backwards though, so oh that's really good stepping. Making a fair few yards for Bridgewater. It was Jack, uh, Jack Shaw. Oh, apologies, it was Hadland, I think. Bridgewater, are they in at the corner? No, there was a foot into touch. And certainly, it's the uh, fiercest, sharpest edge of attack that we've seen from Bridgewater so far in the match. Yeah, some great defence going in by Chandler, but just brilliant continuity from the Bridgewater boys, keeping hold of the ball, going forward on every single phase, and then eventually the gaps do start to open. Chandler's, oh, it's a really safe line-out. Well taken by Tunney, immediate feedback to the scrum half. Oh, and then it's a brilliant take from Richard Dean, chasing the kick. He's just lost it forward on the floor, otherwise that would have been alarm bells for Bridgewater as Challenge came flooding forward. It's there for Bridgewater. The referee's going to bring them back for the knock-on. I think it's another penalty, actually, Nick. I think he's having a word with his captain, making sure that they cut it out, otherwise somebody potentially is going to go into the bin. Apologies, yes, I think you're absolutely right. Coming in at the side once more. So they have been warned now. Challengers will have to be wary of their work at the breakdown. This is the mazy running of Josh Hadland. I saw him a few moments ago. I thought it was the winger, such was the, the cutting running style of... How he was getting through the numbers. Oh, that was a big defensive hit there on Livet. Didn't have an awful lot of time. As we said, he's not the biggest inside centre you'll see. He struggled to get that ball away cleanly. Challen as well have the line out. Yeah, there was actually a knock-on in, in the breakdown by Connop there, and I think the Bridgewater boys saw it, which is why they weren't reacting that greatly. Um, the pass goes out, but he thinks that he's going to get blown, but he's just got to play to the whistle. Yes. Sound advice there from Tasha Hunt. Dean cuts back in field, manages to shrug off the attempted tackle from Oakley. Peters offers himself as an option on the left and gets the chance to carry. Pass was to Chadwick, but couldn't quite hold it. Peters well hit in the tackle. Ball just nudged forwards. Let's go, Jay. Just under five minutes, according to our clock, remaining of the first half. Bridgewater will be really hoping they can get a score before the half-time. If they can, if they can get a seven-pointer before the break, that will be a completely different mindset going into the half-time team talk. The psychology of how things look at half-time so key, of course. Do keep in touch with us. Hashtag that West Schools Cup. George Hartree. Saying only 20 minutes into the game, but Dr. Challoner's fly half was exceptional from the tee. Two very difficult kicks slotted. Well, you're absolutely right, George. See plenty of people miss them. And uh, Weatherall has slotted them both. Two out of two here at Allianz Park. Not only off the tee, his out of hand kicking has been brilliant as well. He's put a few up and unders in, challenging the back three, and also tactically pinning them back. Midfield, but Rattigan, Bridgewater skipper, was able enough to deal with them. And 
Bridge want to come forward, can they spot the opportunity to use the men that they've got on the outside? It's going to be a foot race here. Tackles take a while to come in on Angus Stewart. Good break from the second row. Challenges have got to be sound defensively here. No more penalties. Bridgewater, little show of the dummy, and they try to get away, and it could be a first score for Bridgewater. It is going to be the key try before half-time, and Jake Hibbert, the fly half, gets through, and he's mobbed by his fellow players. Yeah, we talk about those psychology swings that you can see on your pictures now, how much it means to those Bridgewater boys. They are all absolutely buzzing. Going into the halftime with that score line is so different from going in 14-0 down. We've had some good bits of possession, and we've mentioned him before, Nathan Burke, brilliant carry, but then the pace from Angus Stewart to start this, and great recognition that they've uh, the fullback there's over Chase and stepping back on the inside. Brilliant bit of play. Yes, good finish from Hibbert that ball in as well to try and give Oliver Brown a slightly easier conversion attempt. Although he seems to be a lot wider than the way the try got scored. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't going to mention that, but uh, <laughs> maybe it's our perspective. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Brown then to add the extras. No problem at all. Well, they halve the deficit, and at a crucial point, really, as Natasha Hunt says, just before half-time. It's Bridgewater High School 7, Dr Challoner's Grammar School 14. Challoner's had been looking fairly comfortable. They were defending everything Bridgewater threw at them, but of the constant recycling and support play for Bridgewater on that occasion was just too good. Now then, that's a loose ball from the restart. Chalmers, they might have had a chance to really capitalise on that error, but they knocked it on themselves. If there's one thing you don't want, it's the Chalmers boys on the 22 running at you, those backs with the crisp passing that they've shown already in the first half. but it's come back on the Bridgewater side at a crucial moment. Oh, and they're still coming through. Really solid run from Cole Oakley, and Bridgewater are starting to believe in themselves a little bit more now. Roscoe gets that away. Good first-up tackle from Weatherall. He threw everything into that. Big number eight. Oakley is starting to really get going, and there's that man. We've mentioned him a couple of times, Burke. Back row doing a lot of the good work for Bridgewater. Josh Hadland emanating a bit of Scott Brits here at Allianz Park. Saracen Tucker. They try and keep the ball alive. There's Burke. Great running lines, pirouetting in and out of the tackles. Pick and go around the corner from Gleave. It's really good keep ball for Bridgewater. Tiring out the challenger's defence. Joe Higgins off to the field, number 22. Possession eventually into the hands of Challoners and they kick it away. Kick chase hoping to put the pressure on Brown. Tackling is good from Dean. Penalty to Challoners. Holding onto the ball on the floor as Challoners tried to force the turnover and that will satisfy the Buckinghamshire boys. Weatherall, well, just a moment of calm there. I think for a second he just eyed up that right-hand touch line, but then uh, consideration to think, but well, we could add some more points on the board from this position, and that is sound thinking from the fly half. Yeah, it would have been the last play as well. If our clock's right, then there wouldn't have been any time for the line-out, so great decision. Yes, you wonder how much information he got from the referee into that decision. And I think... Uh, I have seen the last of Collingbourne. Well, certainly we're coming into half-time shortly anyway. But uh, number 13 is just... Well, he's certainly getting involved in this ruck here, just on the far side. Difficult to see whether he gets a knock in there. 
coaches always say that a kick is only as good as the chase and Owen puts that ball really deep really dangerous runner Brown at the back he's showed it already and the chase was so good that that turnover there was nothing that the Bridgewater boys could do I was keen to see here as well just in case this doesn't get there from weather or it comes off a post His teammates are ready to chase we start to give chase Weatherall's kick is a good one he's three out of three and that takes Dr Challoners just that extra three points away from Bridgewater. Gives them a ten-point cushion going into half-time. In the first under-15s NatWest Schools Cup Vars semi-final. At half-time it's Bridgewater High School 7, Dr Challoners Grammar School 17. Do keep in touch with us with your thoughts on how you thought that first half has gone. Hashtag NatWest Schools Cup. We are live here from Allianz Park. Great to have your company wherever you're watching, whether it's via the EnglandRugby.com website. I know uh, there are another few schools' websites that are carrying the live stream as well on Twitter, wherever you are. Do let us know your thoughts on that first half. Fascinatingly poised. Bridgewater getting back into the game, which uh, has certainly tightened things up and made it a little bit more exciting. And their forwards have really got a lot of belief. Yeah, they really have. We're going to just have a quick look at some of the replays of the brilliant tries. Well, this was the first one from Challoners and Chadwick out to Anderson, who got that one down. Yeah, crisp handling. So the ball's out in front. The timing of the pass that we've mentioned, that one just checks Chadwick a little bit, but he manages to get the ball over his shoulder and no one's going to stop you seven metres out when you're a winger. That's your job to finish those tries. Brilliant. So here we go. I mentioned before about the ball placement of Tunney. He gets the ball really far back and that just gives the Owen a really good chance to sweep that ball away from the floor, keep it nice and crisp. And again, five metres out, it's a run-in. Keep your scrum half happy. That's the key there from <laughs> yeah. Tunney, isn't it, with that Definitely. ball placement? Yes, you're absolutely right. We've seen how much the breakdown, it, it challenges the teams. And if you can get that ball as far back towards the nine, it just speeds up the play, which is the reason that they've gone in in the corner there. Excellent. In stark contrast, we've seen Bridgewater, and they're kind of going with a one-out approach, so they seem to be picking the ball up and carrying and backing themselves one to ten. Great recognition there from the ten, um, Hibbert, just to step back on the inside because the full-back's coming. He's over-chasing slightly, he's lost his hips, steps off his right foot and comes back under the post, makes the conversion that little bit easier. For those unaware, Natasha just stood in the same direction as the fullback to check which her right foot was. Just thought that was worth sharing with you all. Sold you right up the river there, Natasha. Sorry about that. Uh, so, messages through Twitter. Kieran Bell, nice boots, Jacob Roscoe, even though you copied me. Come on, Bridgewater. Oh, that's lovely. Uh, the backs are attacking well. We'll be good to see a win for our under-15s. That's from Alex Bear. Certainly, it is, as we've discussed, the Bridgewater forwards doing a lot of the hard graft and playing really good supportive rugby. And the Challoners backs putting each other into space with the long, deep, attacking, wide passes coming onto the ball at pace. Definitely. I think it's worth mentioning as well, whether or not his, his kick in, it would be so easy for the score to be 7-10 currently. He's hit three really difficult kicks, two from the touchline, and that just changes the whole perspective for the Challoner boys. Yes, it certainly does. Seven points from the boot of Weatherall so far, which, as you say, makes up that uh, seven of that ten-point deficit. Key messages on from Martin Turner from Bridgewater, from Chris Duggan, the uh, next head coach of Bucks, under 14 and 15. He's the first 15 coach at Challenge as well. Getting those key messages on to the players as we get ready for the second half to resume. Expecting there to be changes, certainly at scrum half for Challoners, and uh, I think we can see that Devon Owen's contribution has come to an end. So Matt Bellamy will be on the scrum half, will play the second 40. Second 30. Second 30, my apologies, <laughs> yes, it's an easy expression to fall into. Isn't it? Second 30, of course.
So ten points between the sides then. Bridgewater High School 7, Dr Challoners Grammar School 17. 30 minutes to decide which of these teams will find their way to Twickenham. And the restart is well brought down by Oakley. There's that easy running hooker of Hadland. Remembering as well that Challoners in that first half were warned. They were given many penalties due to their work around the breakdown. Coming in from the side, quick downfield, well taken by Chadwick. Running up over the halfway line. It's a good, solid defensive wall from Bridgewater. Chadwick might be held up here. Challoners boys are adding their weight to try and keep go forward as Chadwick tries to get the ball to ground. Is it in there? No, it's been ripped by Bridgewater. And they're going to try and attack from their own half, and it's good, strong running. Eventually, it's a, not quite the technique you'd want, but Anderson does well to bring his man down. It's a tight old breakdown. Place back from Burke, away from Roscoe. Oh, the ball is loose. Pressure is on from Challoners. Oh, and then it's hacked through from Day. Where's it going to bounce? It just gets nudged forward from his hands, but that was harem scarum stuff from both sides, and Challoners looking to try and capitalise on the error. Looks like Challoners might be getting a turnover ball here, but there is, of course, a knock-on advantage, but, well, it then gets cleared away by Bridgewater. Anderson on to Chadwick, thinks he might, might have spotted a bit of room over onto the right, and then... Good support run. Callum Hodson. Then Bellamy. It's a low pass from him. It was well taken by Don Goodman. Weatherall. Hoists a high ball. Going to try and get the challenge on. Oh, it's been brilliantly fielded. Are they going to get into the corner through Tony? The big man might get there. And the try's been scored. And James Tunney used every bit of his weight and strength to get through there. Little juggle of the ball as it came down, but... Well, Jack Shaw was in all sorts of trouble as Tunney came running in to compete for that ball. And Challoners get their third try. And it could be a key score at the start of this second half. Yeah, it really is. That's absolute textbook. Brilliant recognition from Weatherhall. He just sits back, slows down his, his pace and just sends it really high. And he doesn't take his eyes off the board, does he? And then has the composure to knock him down, stays on his feet and just keeps going. He is not being stopped there. No, attempted tackle from Hadland is admirable. But Tony had forward momentum. The line at his mercy. So the how good is Monty Weatherall competition continues. He's got kick number four. He's three from three so far. This one, arguably the toughest of the line. Strikes it with the right boot. It looked like it was going past that left hand upright and then curled back in. What an extraordinary strike that was. And Weatherall gets his tally up to nine and crucially doesn't leave a point out there. Takes Challoners up to 24. It's Bridgewater High School 7, Dr Challoners Grammar School 24. I Defen think it's his lucky purple laces that are doing that for him. <laughs> Good spot. <laughs> Defensively, Challoners do need to remain sound if they're going to build on this lead. Check in and out from the Bridgewater hooker. Hadlam places the ball back. It's a little untidy on the floor and it gets nudged forward. Challoners congratulate each other for getting in there. Bellamy will retrieve that ball. For this game, Weatherall had slotted 31 conversions, four penalties. As we said, he's got over. 99 points now. Well, there's some back chat there, signal from the referee. 
and Tunney looks outside in Weatherall deep. They're flooding round now. Challoners with their tails up after that third try. Also the opportunity for Morris to get it away. It was probably the right call to set up the next phase. Not quite sure whether they would have got away. Tunney twisting and turning in. Doing the physical stuff. Bellamy wasn't quite sure where to go. Weatherall thinks he spotted a little chance to keep the pressure on, but it's just been overcooked and goes out on the full, so Bridgewater will have the line out. But that all came from a bit of back chat, certainly discipline. It's uh, maybe symptomatic of the fact that the Bridgewater heads went down a little bit after that try and they're just feeling a bit frustrated and let that bubble over within earshot of the referee. So I'm going to stand for that. Can Fallon spoil this line out in a good area of the field? No, it's back with Bridgewater. Roscoe. Burke. Little cut back in field. Good tackle from Peters. Around the corner. Leave with the carry. Oh, it's a lovely dummy. Bridgewater come flying downfield. Lovely play from Hibbert, the try scorer. Curtis Connor. Ball's gone a little bit loose. Bridgewater just going backwards with possession there. Sid Day. Uncompromising. Wasn't, te wasn't the technique you want, but he brought his man down. And then straight into his face there goes Hadland away from Roscoe Bridgewater with another one of these strong spells of possession Challoner's trying to rip it Weatherall's in there he's not letting his man get to ground eventually did so Weatherall was determined not to give up that fight he had to eventually Roscoe looks at the options decides to go himself was that the right option Challen has come forward, it's been stolen from Sid Day. Away from Bellamy, Tunney. First little dummy, then onto Weatherall. Now he's going to thread that kick through to the right touchline. And at this stage, it's just about keeping the pressure up on Bridgewater and encouraging them or, or asking them to play from their own half. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they do look like they can go from anywhere, so they need to be a bit wary about that tactic. Challengers do make sure that their defensive line is set the whole time, but everything good at the moment is going through Dunny and Weatherhall for Challengers. They're being absolutely brilliant, both in defence and also in attack, making sure that we're playing in the right areas. Ball comes back on the Challengers' side. Weatherhall, Dean, looked at the option outside him. Blake Morris and now Ollie Anderson has to make a tackle on the opposite number 14 Shaw and he's still got him still driving it backwards then gets a bit of help from his teammate Joe Long where's the ball Challoners have ripped it doing their best to try and get the Bridgewater players out of the way they pick round the blind side Oh, they're going to get over the line. The referee's right on the spot, and the try is scored. Now then, who was it? That's the question. Just trying to see. Congratulations, I think, are going to Jake Wilkins. That was real defensive pressure that became attack from Challoners. It was Ollie Anderson who drove the man back in the tackle. And eventually they win the ball on the floor. And Challoners are beginning to get out of sight now. Yeah, it's a great finish. Absolutely brilliant finish. He's he's going forward, he's kind of all over the place, but he still has the mentality to look where the line is and be able to reach out and finish. Brilliant stuff from Jake Wilkins. Four tries. Well, four out of four. That one's drifting over to the right. 
I nearly said before he kicked that, this is probably one of the easier ones he's had. I wonder if he might just take his eye off it, thinking he's got the trickier ones. And it turns out that's what's happened. So whether or let's one go, but we'll certainly let him off that, because he's been exemplary from the tee the rest of the morning. Bridgewater High School, seven. Dr. Challoner's 29. Challoner's with possession. They're coming up over the halfway line. They're flooding forward in number here. Big tackle. It's well laid back. Connor. Oh, sorry. Benjo Race with the ball there. Tunney. Oh, lovely footwork. Then Tony finds Ollie Anderson. Then another great offload back to race. Bellamy, Weatherall. Look to just try and find a way to, getting, to get Blake Morris through the gap there. Peters steps off the right boot, goes around the corner. Good set back from the open side. Weatherall, Dean. Oh, they had men on the outside. If they could have got it out, they might yet get it out. That's good awareness from Sid Day. Defence has got there just in time. Chadwick gets it back for Bellamy. Tunney, it looks like it could be another one for Challoners if Bridgewater aren't careful. Referee happy enough for there to be a competition of the ball. Challoners in at the side there. Perhaps if that offence had been on their own line, the referee might have had something else to say about it. He's already warned them. Bridgewater with the clearance all as well. It was nearly kept in field by Callum Hodson. The challenge now for Bridgewater and Natasha is is to keep going, is to keep sticking at it, believing that they do still have a chance. Yeah, definitely. There's still time. There's still 12 minutes in the game. If they get an early score now, then they can bring that deficit back and potentially push on. But they're really having to work hard, aren't they, to keep the Chandler boys at bay at the moment. And that's just psychology, psychologically, sorry, a really difficult battle. You can see all the heads are dropped on this screen as, as they're walking really slowly back to that, that scrum. So, yeah, the backs really don't feel like they're still within a chance by the look of their body language. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Messages on hashtag NatWest Schools Cup, supporting my cousin number 12, Richard Dean, for Challoners. Shout out to Austin Carr from Sam. Come on, Bridgie. We've got a job to do. If you're just joining us on the live stream, don't be uh, confused by the clock counting up to 40 minutes because, of course, it is our second half, 30 minutes a half. Shove has seen that ball come back on the challenger's side. Tunney picks and goes down the short side from number eight. Takes three or four to stop him. Bellamy, quick service for Weatherall. Have they got men round on the outside? Weatherall, surely there's a three on two here if they can use it. Weatherall should have given it. It was on. Chadwick. Comes for Morris. Oh, I think the referee said that went forward. I'm not so sure, but... Yeah, Chadwick's just making life a little difficult for himself at the minute. He seems to be taking the ball and going really high, trying to offload over, over the man that's tackling him. Is all he needs to do is just catch. As soon as that defender turns in on him, there's no way he'll get back out to make the tackle, so just give it through the hands. Well, there's Weatherall 
perhaps should have gone there. I think he thought he could perhaps get through the two tacklers and then make the offload round the corner. And Dean, this is Chadwick. That's maybe where it should have gone before he had to pass over the toppers. Natasha Hunt says. Yeah, as soon as you see Shaw's um, hips turn in, then the ball's just got to go. Great little clearance there. Yes, lovely clearing of the lines from Bridgewater. Chadwick uses the feet. Oh, he's got away from the tackle over the halfway line. Bellamy looking. Big sell of the dummy from Don Goodman. That was a cracking dummy. Big wind-up. Love those. Ball goes into the 22. Bridgewater are being chased down. Challenges have got to get the man back to his feet. Weatherall might have gone in there and stolen that on the turnover, though. And that will be great work if so. Peter's there to help secure it. And then it comes away through Dean. They're all a little bit out of shape in this back line. They eventually find Tunney. Sid Day's waiting outside and he gets the ball. Day cuts back in off the left boot. Left boot. Oh, and then close quarters, they're over. And is it the skipper, Ed Griffiths, I think? Challoners with try number five. Yeah, again, great kick over. Brilliant recognition um, from Joe Higgins, I think it was, that turned and managed to read the ball, but just the whole Bridgewater team a bit slow to get back and counter-ruck, um, sorry, secure the ball in the ruck. So the counter-ruck's good, turnover ball, and again, miss pass. There he is, Duggan on the end, and Sid Day, who we haven't mentioned yet in commentary, has been absolutely phenomenal this game. He's been brilliant, and he was involved in that as well. Loads of time on the ball. Bridgewater just need to keep pushing and make that tackle. But Duggan, here we go. Jaws, two men, could have potentially gone, but he's just taken them out of the equation before the offload. Weatherall's radar just seems to have started flickering a little. Just lets another one go, but Challenger's are well in control of this now, partly due to his boot in that first half and at the start of the second. And Bridgewater, seven. Dr. Challenger's 34. It's going to be first honours in the semi-finals to the south in the north-south battle. Lancashire against Buckinghamshire today in this opening semi-final in the Vars competition. Brown goes for a deep restart. Good take from Tunney. Look at the open field that's in front of Challoners here. Oh, my goodness me. It had to go. It had to go to hands, and Challoners could have romped that one right upfield. That was uh, well, an unfortunate handling from the boys in red. Perhaps a little overexcited at the opportunity that was ahead of them there. Yeah, I think he just took the eye off the board and he saw the amount of space in front of him. And when you're a winger, normally you've got gas to burn, so he just got a bit too excited about that opportunity. Message from Josh, huge game for Challenger's under 15, smashing it. Great team and good tactics that suit this back line. Well, we've certainly mentioned that a couple of times at the back line. They've looked really slick. Ball is secured after the line out. Skipper Griffiths having just scored the try. Motors upfield, presents the ball for his scrum half. It's there, Weatherall waits and receives. Going to be a kick to ball. Chases on over on the far side. Nobody gets to that, in fact. It's loose on the floor. And... I think the communication must be really good across that back line, because as you saw when Weatherall caught that ball, the whole of the back line were completely flat as if they were defending. So they obviously knew that the kick was coming in and then that just increases the chance of getting the ball back off the chase. Yes, absolutely. Oh, 
well day thought he was going to hold on to that it was almost a brilliant spoil and steal from the line out from the prop there you go nick he scored a knock on not, an, not a um, penalty <laughs> doesn't goodness. always happen my goodness <laughs> Because he's a prop. <laughs> Who, the referee? No. The <laughs> <laughs> the uh, delighted to see that call made. Be in touch with the RFU's referees. More of this, please. <laughs> from Bridgewater can they put an attack together to get that second try no it's not forward Tunney clears up and then getting around the outside Morris good feet to begin with oh sorry it's Anderson over on this near side Peters big tackle on him wasn't held so entitled to get back to his feet and then sets it back Tunney good offload he attracts the tacklers, Tunney, and then has the opportunity to put others into space, which he's been doing well this second half. Chadwick. Another knock-on from Sid Day. Challenge is perhaps just forcing it a little as they search for those tries. Just losing a bit of depth, everybody just standing a little bit still and expecting to get going from a standing start. Yeah, they've increased their offloading as well. I think they're seeing the opportunities in rather than keeping the ball, going through the phases, sucking in the defenders, which they did so well in the first half. They're just getting a little bit too anxious and trying to throw everything around. When you're up with a scoreline like that, though, why not? Well, indeed. That is the other argument, of course, isn't it? Bridgewater away. Brown, kick downfield. Chadwick. He's going to be able to, take, be able to take that after the first bounce. A little chip through. He's meant that for himself, but he's going to have to give chase here. Adler with another carry. Penalty. I don't need to tell you what it's for. It's what the referee's pick challenge is for throughout the last 50 minutes. Coming in at the side. Adler is uh, just having to take a breath off the ball. He's just taken a bit of a knock to the face. Challenge has managed to force a turnover in the mall there, though. Bridgewater taking the ball in. Changes are going to be made now. Both sides, in fact. Contribution complete for Blake Morris. For Don Goodman. Weatherall. Shannon is bundled into touch. In a few minutes' time, it'll be. Natasha Hunt's job to select the game's man of the match. There'll be a couple of interesting players in the running, I'd imagine. Monty Weatherall has had a decent game. Yeah, Sid Day has had a brilliant game as well. And I think you've got to mention Josh Hadland and also Nathan Burke. It's always really difficult to stand out in a losing team, especially when they're being pumped by this many points. But they've been brilliant for their for their own team, Bridgewater, and they've everything good that's been for Bridgewater has gone through that. But I think definitely on the challenger side, you've got to look at Sid Day, James Tunney, and also Weatherall. They've all been absolutely phenomenal today. I'll leave you to uh, muse over that for a moment. As Challen has come forward once again. Bellamy. Griffiths. Weatherall. Dean. Day into the line. That's a better pass from him and cutting in on the line. And is that James Tunney with the score? It is the big number eight. 
he gets his second of the game. Brilliant try. Day's hands on this, though. You don't have many props in the game these days that can pass like that. Fantastic timing. He's been absolutely brilliant. And then Tunney, just such a powerful runner. He's done it all game. Great to see him go over for his second. Six tries now then for Challoners. Ollie Anderson, Huey Chadwick, James Tunney with his first, and then Wilkins, Griffiths and Tunney with his second. Good little offload out of the contact. Keep the ball going, Weatherall just stands and pivots. Great timing on the pass from both the 12 and the one, and then James Tunney just pins his ears back. Weatherall back on target. A little surprise given it's right in front of the sticks, but it takes Challoners past the 40-point mark. Bridgewater High School 7, Dr Challoners Grammar School 41. And they can start to dream of Twickenham. What a prize. Absolutely. Incredible day out for these guys. Further change has been made for Challoners as well. Yeah, it's great to see them using all of their substitutions, letting everybody get involved in the game and in the day. Playing on the uh, hallowed Allianz Park turf as well. I don't know if you can call it turf when it's a plastic pitch, but <laughs> the thought's there. The ball's a little loose from Challoners. Just a knock on and an accidental offside, so, well, in fact, it's given us an offside, so a penalty. So, Natasha your thoughts on our man of the match yeah I mean I've mentioned a few of them but man of the match has to go to James Tunney not just for the stereotypical number eight work that he's done his carries his tackles but also the timing of his passing the link play that he's been an extra back on the field for them and um, it's been absolutely brilliant all game so he's my man of the match today well, sound contribution I can't verify as well just as Bridgewater looked to get their second score they're in at the corner and it's Jack Rigby well, that was well taken, spotting the opportunity of Dr Challoner's defence not being organised, and Bridgewater are in. It's a comeback of sorts, but it's not really going to affect the result with only three and a half minutes left remaining on the clock. But credit where it's due, Rigby getting in in the corner. If Oakley sees his winger on the, on the side of the pitch there with that offload, that is absolutely fantastic vision because he's one-handed offload, flung the ball over about three people to get there. Brilliant. Let's have another little look. Great initial carry to suck in so many defenders. Oh, he has seen him. What goodness, an offload. Goodness me. You're absolutely right, Natasha. That is sensational stuff from uh, Cole Oakley. Oliver Brown with a tough conversion attempt. Just come back to that discussion on uh, on James Tunney in a moment. <laughs> Brown, have the legs. It's just left of the upright as well. So Bridgewater High School get themselves into double figures, 12 points. Dr. Challenders 41, but as we were just discussing there, James Tunney. I must say that uh, it wasn't populous because of the second try. Natasha Hunt had made that call just before that try <laughs> went in. Uh, credit where it's due to my co-commentator. That's my biggest um, bugbear about commentators that pick the person that scores the most points. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and also for a nine to pick a forward as well. Nice, nice thing to see. Although nine to eight. See, nines love their forwards. Yeah, love my forwards. Absolutely. left then of this Vars semi-final. <laughs> Just uh, hear the boots of the Bishops Vazies and Thomas Rich's pupils down below us as they're getting themselves ready for their match. That is a one o'clock kickoff. drive from Challoners to get that ball back. Weatherall, Dean just going a little wider. And Hodson, oh, and then really good pace and opening up of the legs 
from Charlie Barraclough, but he was almost judo thrown into touch. But the referees decided a little look at the watch that that will be the end of the match. It's a stunning win for Dr. Challoners. And Bridgewater have given a decent account of themselves, certainly in that first half and with the score before the break. Six tries for Dr. Challoners. It's a sound victory. And at the moment, you've got to have a look at them as a side that could go on and win the competition. They'll be very proud of their offering. We will hear from Chris Duggan very soon. Bridgewater High School, 12. Dr. Challoners, 41, the final score. Natasha Hunt will be uh, nipping down to grab a word with some of the victorious players or coaches involved. We'll come to them very shortly. Great to see the uh, fans and supporters who've enjoyed it as well. And I have to show it a little bit of personal pride as my uh, nephew is also on that winning team. Well done to Daniel Peters and to all the boys at Challoners Grammar School. They are into a final at Twickenham. What a magnificent achievement. Enjoying their rugby out there and scoring the tries. So these are the tries then. It all started with Ollie Anderson's score. And we discussed it earlier, Collingbourne had to go off uh, in the second half with a knock, but Anderson getting into the corner with slip passing down the back line. Dean through Collingbourne onto Chadwick, held the last defender, got that ball away. Nothing the covering tackle of Hibbert could do. So, just as we look at this replay of Chadwick going in, the uh, Challoners boys uh, are just making their way over to the fast down. This was Bridgewater with their score through Hibbert. Little step inside, managed to get away from the tackle of Ben Quick. And at that stage, Challoners were in a real fight. But James Tunney with the first try of the second half from that crossfield kick. Jack Shaw won't enjoy watching this one, but really good strength and focus from Tunney. There was only one thing happening after he caught that ball. Well, there's Tunney with that drive to the line. And he gets down. Then Wilkins was the next man to get on the scoreboard. It all broke down, and Wilkins managed to spot the opportunity as he rolled near the line. We can see on this reverse angle. It's near enough. Hold on a minute. That's the line. And he dots down. And then it was the turn of the skipper to get onto the scoreboard. Sid Day cutting back inside. Griffiths crashing over from close range. And this is turning over for the last score. Oh, sorry, this is the replay of the previous one, my apologies. There's Griffiths dotting down. And Griffiths trying to suck in the defenders as they look to go wide. Day, beautiful timing of the pass and the running line from Tunney for the second try. A man of the match performance. 
And then Bridgewater with the little last token effort from Rigby. Well, let's hear now from the winning coach, the head of rugby for Dr Challoners, Chris Duggan, is speaking with Natasha Hunt. I'm joined with the winning coach, Chris Duggan, um, for Dr Challoners. You must be absolutely buzzing after that performance. Give us your initial thoughts. Um, yeah, absolutely over the moon for the boys, really. Uh, the school and all the parents and everyone that's been here supporting us. Um, they've been amazing all year. Um, so it was a bit nerves for myself, let alone them this morning. They put it into practice and they've just absolutely played out of their skin. So really, really happy for all of them. Yeah, it's a brilliant result. I mean, 14-7 at half time. What were, your, what, were, what were you saying to the boys at half time? What was the messages so being put across? Um, don't fall off tackles. Um, and I feel we let them back into the game right before half time. And I was looking for us to hold out. And unfortunately, we didn't. But um, scoring quickly, we've done in all games. And we've managed to do it in the second half and finish strong and even at the end we're still looking to score which is obviously a really really good thing as well yeah definitely I mean the intensity that your boys showed throughout that match was absolutely phenomenal but also the work rate between the backs and the forwards and how well that they work together is that something you've been focusing on all season um, yeah I would say so and the, the boys are quite they're quite good at interchangeable in position some of the backs could go in, in the forwards and vice versa and uh, we've been looking at kind of their basic skills and trying to put them into the game and right yeah so might be playing in the number four but I've got no problem with her in the centres as long as they can <laughs> pass it on if it needs to and obviously carry it if they need to so um, yeah they've trained really really well and put the, put the effort in so it's really really pleasing for myself to see them putting it onto the pitch as well. No it's fantastic I mean the thing for me was the timing of the pass I mean 1 to 15 every single boy was so good at timing the pass when the defender was committed but not late enough that they couldn't get that ball away is that another thing that you've really focused on coming into this? Yeah definitely um We've done a lot of work, you know, threes, two, three versus twos, four versus twos, and <laughs> doesn't always go so well in training. So they've been running a bit, um, but yeah, they, you know, when you put live opposition in front of you, it's different. And the good thing, from my perspective, is that they didn't shy away from any kind of physicality that Bridgewater brought because they did, and um, they, you know, that was something that I was wary of. Um, and the boys has just been excellent We're in that facet in all games, and we're able to do it in today's game as well. Fantastic. And lastly, just. Tell us what it means to you and the boys to be heading to the home of English Rugby. Twickenham on the 16th is pretty amazing, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's amazing. Like September, we kind of thought oh, it would be brilliant if we got there. And as you go through the rounds, you start thinking, yeah, it's going to, oh, oh, is it? And just today, kind of, it was like, let's get today out of the way and we can think about it. Yeah, have it in the back of your mind, but I'm absolutely over the moon for them. And personally, I, you know, me, John Dedman and uh, Rich Ponton have been working with the boys very hard, along with Keith Long, who's from a local club. Club. So, um, as a coaching team, we're just over the moon for the boys, really, and, and the school, and the parents, and everyone that's helped out, really. Brilliant. Well, we wish you the best of luck in the, on the 16th, and excellent work today. Brilliant. Congratulations. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Thank Cheers. you. Is that right? <laughs> to uh, Natasha Hunt for the post-match thoughts of Dr. Challoner's head of rugby, Chris Duggan. A great result for the boys from Buckinghamshire, from Amersham. They have dominated this first Vars semi-final. We have a second one to come, but for now, it's a full-time score with Challoners on their way to Twickenham of Bridgewater High School 12, Dr Challoners Grammar School 41.